Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. So pack one, pick one, what do we have? Our rare is Bishop of Wings, opened this quite a bit already. Again, not the best rare, pretty difficult to make it work in drafts. So we're looking at an Air Elemental, nice 5-mana uh, 4-4 four, four Flyer, which is quite decent. We've got a Pacifism as a nice efficient removal spell. Uh, Audacious Thief is a nice common, but I don't think I'd take it over Pacifism or Air Elemental. So I think it's between these two, and not the biggest fan of white and draft and descent necessarily, but it's still a close decision here, Pacifism versus Elemental. Nothing else really in the pack that stands out. Is there anything we can hope to wheel? I mean, the bots don't take Brawler very highly, so if we take Elemental we might wheel Brawler and end up in an Elemental-themed deck. We could wheel the Growth Cycle, end up in Blue-Green, which is also fine. If we take the Pacifism, could maybe end up in like a Black-White Grindy deck, wheeling the Skeleton. Yeah, I think I'm still taking the Flyer here. Alright, so... Maybe regretting our pick a little bit, since the Warlord would have been a nice follow-up to a Pacifism. Haven't really seen many go white decks in draft, but this is definitely one nice build round, if we can make it work. And also gives us a mana sink, there's not too many mana sinks in the set, so spending 5 mana to make a token might not seem like much, but if the board is stalled out, this is a pretty nice ability. What else do we have in the pack? Um, not much, this pack is pretty weak. We've got like a Diamond Knight, which is serviceable. We've got a Brawler, again, as a nice elemental card. Although it does tend to wheel. Netcaster Spider is a solid green common. Vile, I only really like if we already have the Weaponsmith. The Warlord doesn't go with our elemental at all, basically. So if we take it, we're basically speculating on green white being open, which I don't love. Could just take the Diamond Knight as an okay card, could take the Lavakin Brawler to set ourselves up for elementals. I think those are the main considerations. So between a Diamond Knight and a Lavakin Brawler, again, Brawlers do tend to wheel. Bolts don't take them highly enough. So I kind of like the Diamond Knight here. And all right, well, <laughs> third pick Risen Reef. I know where this draft is headed. Yeah, that's an easy pick. Let's see what else there is in the pack. Leafkin Druid would be a nice one as well. Don't think we'll wheel that one. But, uh, yeah, this is a no-brainer. Alright, fourth pick. What do we have here? I do like taking Evolving Wilds if we end up with, like, a Risen Reef or two, because we might end up in blue-red, splashing green for Risen Reef, and then the fixing from Evolving Wilds is nice. Uh, Woodland Champion not at its best in blue-green, still serviceable if we have a few token makers. Remember that uh, treasure tokens also count for the Woodland Champion, so the 5 mana dragon will work as well. Again, there's Slavagan Brawler, which we might wheel or we could pick right now to set ourselves up for elementals. Smuggler plays well with the Brawler. Not much in blue and green that I want to take highly. Like the Cutthroat is a fine card, but it's also not going to be at its best in the elemental style deck, since we usually don't have a ton of instants, it's usually just a pile of creatures. I think it's between like a Brawler or an Evolving Wilds for me here. Evolving Wilds to set us up for maybe a three-color elemental deck, or just take the elemental that's in the pack, even though again there's a chance that it wheels. I think I take the Evolving Wilds. And alright, pretty easy Ambercat here. The only card in the team are colors that we want, and uh, plays great if we end up in a heavy elemental deck. So again, Risen Reef could still be splashed, that's why we took the Evolving Wild so highly. Diamond Knight might not be at its best, but we don't have to play it, that's fine. Just take the Ember Cat for now. Alright, there's a few cards to consider. Gift of Paradise could be additional fixing, I'm not happy about Gift of Paradise necessarily, but it's kind of a necessary evil if we end up in multiple colors. Ramping from 3 to 5 can be useful in some decks, we already have a nice 5 drop in Air Elemental. Could take a Season of Growth, which is also a nice build around if we end up blue-green with maybe a couple Rabbit Bites and Pump Spells. Then Season of Growth is also pretty decent. We're playing best of one, so we don't have to prioritize Natural End for the sideboard. 
I think I'll take the Season of Growth for now. Alright, that's an easy Leafkin Druid. Brawler would also be a consideration, but not over the Leafkin Druid. And now we can take the Frostlings, stick to the Elementals, stick to Blue. So we're not sure yet if we're going to be Blue-Green. Splashing Red maybe, I mean we don't want to splash the Amber Cat, but we could maybe splash some other Elementals like the Lavakin Brawler. Air Elemental is double blue, so it's not an easy card to splash. So blue-green splash reds, or maybe without a splash, is looking like the most likely right now. But we'll see where the next couple packs lead us. So this is the pack we wield. We did indeed wield the growth cycle, so that goes nicely with our season of growth. Overcome is also a card that's better than it looks. It was pretty bad in the set when it was originally printed. It's a bit better here. Especially if we have a creature-heavy deck, like the one we're trying to build here. I don't know, I still like having a couple of growths with our uh, Season of Growth, if we end up in that type of deck. So I think I'll take that for now. And I don't think we'll end up with a bunch of Fairy Miscreants at this point. Anticipate could be fine, just as kind of a filler card at two. Help us find the Risen Reef more often. And a Wolfkin Bond plays well with the Season of Growth as well. Playable card. Spitters and Elemental, but again, I don't think we'll end up as red as one of our primary colors. So I don't think the Spitter's going to be amazing. Really want ways for the Spitter to be able to keep attacking or be relevant in the late game. And we don't have many of those in the deck. Alright, Befuddle also. A little bit of synergy with Season of Growth if we target our own creature just to draw an additional card. Could take the crab as an okay blocker. Don't have many 4 drops yet. So... Kind of an interesting decision. I guess we'll take the crab. Uncommon for the vault, I don't think there's any chance we end up splashing. I guess if we open like a Yarok we could end up in Sultai. I'll take the blade brand just in case. Alright, so heading into the th next pack here, our deck is very light on removal. In fact, we don't have any removal, so we would love to pick up some Rabbit Bites to go with the Season of Growth as well. Maybe some red removal we can splash. Got some options here. Murder, not really a card we can splash, sadly. We've got a Boreal Elemental as a nice 5-drop flyer that's also an elemental for the various synergies. Also something interesting to note is that we did not wheel any of those Lavakin Brawlers, so even though I mentioned the bots don't take them highly, apparently they either adjusted or we just happened to be sitting next to a Red Drafter that took the Brawlers before us. So yeah, the Boreal Elemental could be a consideration. There's some okay double green 2 and 3 drops here with Brontodon and Troll. Not the most energistic in our deck since they're not Elementals, and double green isn't the easiest to cast, but they're just individually pretty powerful cards. I think I still like the Boreal Elemental here. And then there's some cards we could wheel, Octoprophet, Brontodon, Troll would all be fine additions. I'm looking at this other Leafkin Druid as a nice 2-drop to help us ramp. It's also an Elemental. Uh, Thornwood Falls would give us a bit of mana fixing. And then I guess if we splash red, Rapacious Dragon could also be a consideration on summon. Can be playable. I think I just take the Leafkin. Alright, well we were talking about how our deck could use some removal. Sleep Paralysis, while not the most mana efficient or exciting removal spell, could get the job done. Uh, Feral Invocations, decent with uh, Season of Growth. So that's maybe a card we can hope to wheel. Outrage being double red is going to be difficult to splash. So I think we'll just take the Sleep Paralysis for now. Ooh, wow. Fourth pick, Agent of Treachery. Especially with double Leafkin Druid to help us ramp, this card's going to be amazing. So that's an easy pickup. Would also like a Frost Link, so the second growth cycle would be nice. A Silverback Shaman, totally reasonable. But yeah, we're going to take this Agent. And a Spectral Sailor, one of the better uncommons in the set. 
Also a nice mana sink with these Leafkin Druids providing additional mana, so that's another easy pickup. So blue definitely underdrafted at the table. And alright, got some options here as well. Scuttle Mod's not exciting, but if we're trying to play big spells like Agent of Treachery, drawing cards with our uh, Spectral Sailor, then having more mana dorks is kind of useful. There's another Diamond Knight. Um, our deck seems to be skewed a bit heavily towards blue, so the Diamond Knight could still be fine. Denizen could be kind of a win condition by itself, but I don't think we need it here necessarily, since we already seem to have a few nice flyers with Air Elemental, Boreal Elemental, Agent can win the game, so I don't think we're necessarily milling the opponent. Convolute can be a nice card in some matchups, but our deck is mostly tapping out, so keeping up 3 mana for Convolute is a pretty big cost, unless we have a Spectral Sailor in play. Uh, if we picked up that Feral Invocation, then the Convolute would also get a little bit better. Kind of just like the Scuttle Mods. It's not an exciting or flashy card, but I think in our deck we just want to be able to make a ton of mana. It's just an extra creature so the Leaf Kindred can make double green faster, and it also fixes for red mana if we still want to splash red somehow. Ooh, Portal of Sanctuary. So this is a pretty slow card, but in some matchups this is very difficult to beat, especially if we have some nice enter battlefield abilities. Works great with Agent of Treachery. If we have the time to wait until we can play Agent for a total of 8 mana and then bounce it back with a portal, it's almost impossible to beat unless the opponent has instant speed removal or a counter spell. So that's a great combination. Works great with Risen Reef, Frost Links. It's got some other interesting combos with it. So I don't hate the portal. Anything else? I mean, Octoprofit would be fine too. We don't have many 4-drops, and Octoprofit would fit in quite nicely, although there's a chance we wheel one out of the first few packs we saw in this uh, second pack here. So I think I'll take the portal and then hope to pick up a Octoprofit later. Alright, could take another Scuttlemot, another Anticipate. Not much too exciting here. The modes can be okay in some matchups. It's pretty bad if we were playing against a flyer heavy deck. And we already seem to have a decent number of two drops. So I don't think we'll play the Amber Cat. But we do have double Leafkin. Season of Growth. Anticipate that we can play early. Usually don't play the Growth Cycle on turn two, but still a cheap card we can play. I think I just like the Scuttle Mod here. And now we can also. Keep our eyes on maybe another expensive card, like another 7-drop. There's a Giant at 7 mana, which would be quite strong in our deck, since that's also great with the uh, portal to pick it back up and make more wolf tokens. So that's also a card I wouldn't mind picking up. Now the Octoprofit did wheel, so that's nice. And I'll take another Wolfkin Bond to go with our Season of Growth. Could also consider the Rapacious Dragon. Since we do have double Scuttle Mods, we do have Evolving Wilds. So playing like a turn 4 or turn 5 for Pacious Dragon and then ramp into Agent of Treachery could be nice. And I doubt I'm going to play a second Wolfkin Bond anyway. So I think I'll keep the options open for a Red Splash here. Nothing here that we really want. Alright, um... Not against another Octoprofit here, again, don't have many 4-drops yet. Could also consider the Sea Serpent, since we do have quite a bit of ramp with double Leafkin Druid, double Scuttle Mod, so just having like a random 6-mana Curve Topper could be decent. Kind of hoping we can just pick up another expensive card in the next pack at some point, and I think Octoprofit fits our curve nicely. So we'll take the Profit. Convolute Wields, might play that one. Probably not playing a denizen, but you never know. Alright, last pack. Our rare is Lotus Field. Don't think this does much for us. So not exactly what we were hoping for. But another Boreal Elemental is nice. Could also splash this Reduced Ashes. Since again, we do have quite a bit of mana fixing with double Scuttle Mutt and uh, Evolving Wilds. So we wouldn't need a ton of mountains to make that splash possible. So it's probably between the Elemental and the Reduced to Ashes. So this one's pretty close. Our deck is pretty removal light. Just have this Sleep Paralysis and 
I guess Agent can steal something, but that's about it. Boreal Elemental has some built-in synergy with Risen Reef, which is nice. So I would definitely like both cards. If we don't take the Reduce, then we're hoping to just get a Rabbit Bite in this pack at some point, or another Reduce we can splash. I guess like Pacifism could also be a splashable removal spell. Since we're not committed to the Rat Splash, we could splash any third color, so we could also consider Pacifism over Reduce and just splash white instead of red. We're not going to get many elemental synergies in white, but if we're just splashing for a removal spell, then I guess Pacifism could just be better than Reduce. Even if we don't play the Rapacious Dragon, I think I'll just take the elemental for now. Uh, Alright, it's a pretty straightforward Cloudkin Seer. Let me just double check. Yeah, Flood of Tears isn't particularly amazing in drafts. Not our season of growth, but we didn't end up with a ton of pump spells. Cloudkin Seer is just great. It's an elemental, it draws a card, it's a flyer. Definitely a candidate for one of the best commons in the set. Alright, probably gotta take the rabbit bite now. Removal in our primary colors. Another Frost Lynx would be nice. Reduce on the splash would be nice if we didn't have a rabbit bite. Pulse is playable. But we'll just take the rabbit bites. Also plays great with our Season of Growth. And alright, this is an interesting pack. So let's take a look. We could use a second growth cycle. There's a Highlands, which would again further make it easier to splash red, although we don't have a great reason to splash red at the moment. And Stormkin on the splash also isn't too exciting. So yeah, this is between Growth Cycle and uh, a land, I think. If we take the land, we're basically hoping to pick up a late Reduce to Ashes or some other elemental, like maybe a Lavakin Brawler, I could consider splashing. Otherwise, we could just take the second Growth Cycle and then double Growth Cycle with a Season of Growth is pretty nice. And it gives us another way to kind of break a board stall. I kind of don't mind the Growth Cycle. All right, another Rabbit Bite. I think we take that over Sleep Paralysis. We don't have a ton of giant creatures to fight with, so that's one potential concern with Rabbit Bites. We don't have a Scorpion with Death Touch, for example. The Thicket Crasher would also be a nice 4-drop, although it does play a lot better if we also have like a bunch of Lavagin Brawlers to give Trample to. The Trample is not too relevant in our deck, but yeah, I think we take the Rabbit Bite over Paralysis. And then, yeah, would love to pick up, like, a late Scorpion to go with these two Rabbit Bites. Alright, still a ton of options here. Netcaster to give us a bit of game against flying creatures. A third Octoprophet to smooth out our draws. Or the Feral Invocation as kind of an additional combo trick pump spell type effect. So let's take a look at our entire deck. So I don't think we'll play the Denizen. Uh, Diamond Knight looks reasonable. Convolute is cuttable. Probably not playing the Rapacious Dragon at this point. Not sure about the Fortress Crab. So yeah, the cards we're most likely to cut here are Anticipate, Diamond Knight, Convolute, maybe one Scuttlemutt, Fortress Crab, and maybe the Wolfkin Bond. So these are kind of the maybes. Everything else I think I'm pretty happy with. So let's say we cut all these five cards, that leaves us 21 cards if we don't count the land. So we need about like two or three more playables. Netcaster slots in the three drops nicely, but we do already have quite a few flyers ourselves with double Boreal Elemental, Air Elemental, Cloudkin Seer, so it's not like we're too worried about opposing flyers. Octoprophet would give us another nice four drop, which we're definitely lacking. And now that we have double Growth Cycle, I don't think Feral Invocation is all that important. If we had a second Season of Growth, then I would value the Feral Invocation a bit higher. I think I just like another Octoprophet, to be honest. Alright, and got a few options here. The Thornwood Falls would improve our mana. And since we don't have any 1-drops, we can just play the Stapped on turn 1, which is nice. The Tracker gives us a Mana Sink, although we already have a Spectral Sailor. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to have more mana sinks in the grindier matchups where there's a board stall and you just want to get ahead on cards. 
Otherwise, there's a Pulse of Morasa, which can buy back some of our better creatures, like the Risen Reef and the Agent of Treachery, and some of our flyers. So there's three different reasonable options available. We do have quite a few mana producers here with double Leafkin, double Scuttle mod. So having these mana sinks is nice. If we play this late, it allows us to spend a ton of mana getting back a creature, replaying that creature. So it's also a pretty mana hungry card. And it allows us to get back our powerful creatures, but the tracker helps us find the powerful creatures in the first place. So I think I like tracker over pulse. And since we're not splashing a third color, I guess falls isn't as important as it would be normally. I think I like the tracker. And we could pick up a third growth cycle. They do get better in multiples. Yeah, I don't mind it. And maybe a Loaming Shaman. Not gonna need Gift or Natural End since we're playing Bassa 1. I doubt we'll play the Loaming Shaman, but I guess at the very least it's an uncommon for the Vault. Oh wow. Second Season of Growth, so now... Triple Growth Cycle, Double Rabbit Bite is looking a lot more appealing as well, giving us a nice card draw engine. I think I like it over the second tracker, because now we have Tracker and Spectral Sailor's Mana Sinks. And yeah, a fourth Growth Cycle could also be nice, but I think we'd rather have three Growth Cycles and two Seasons instead of one Season, four Growth Cycles. And sure. Not gonna play the moats anyway. Alright, so we ended up with a pretty sweet blue green season of growth elemental ramp deck here. So let's make those cuts we were making earlier. Don't need Loaming Shaman. Yeah, Diamond Knight is kind of a card I could take or leave. Same with Convolutes. Don't need the crab now that we have triple Octoprofits. And I guess Wolfkin Bond is okay now with double season. So I think I'll cut the Diamond Knights and I'll cut the Convolutes. Do we still need Portal of Sanctuary? That's maybe also cuttable now that we have double season of growth as kind of card draw engines to provide value in a longer game. Let's take a look. So how many creatures with a nice Enter Battlefield ability do we have? Agent, of course, is the best one. Cloudkin Seer draws a card, so that's nice. Frostlings can tap something down, so that's useful. Risen Reef is also great. So we need to make three more cuts. I think this is probably a 17 land deck. We do have some expensive cards we want to play, like Agent, and we do have some mana sinks like Tracker and Sailor, but we also have a lot of mana dorks with double Leafkin Druid, double Scuttle Mod, so I don't think we need more than 17 lands. Plus we have a ton of card selection with Octoprofit letting us cry, Season letting us cry, so we can just bottom lands anyway. So also don't want less than 17 lands. So yeah, three more cuts. Could get behind cutting a portal, could get behind shaving a scuttle mod, could shave the wolfkin bonds. Maybe the third growth cycle is not needed, but with double season it seems nice. It's just that we're a bit creature light, so if we end up with a hand that has like all pump spells and no creatures, that's awkward as well. Could also shave an Octoprofits. I think our deck has enough late game that it's not going to need the portal, since we have Spectral Sailor, Tracker, Double Season, all as kind of card draw engines. And the portal kind of falls in the same category as kind of a late game grindy card that provides a bit of advantage. So I think we can cut the portal from this deck. If we didn't have Double Season or Sailor or Tracker, then I could see playing the Sanctuary as it just plays well with Agent and some of these other Enter Battlefield abilities. But it's pretty expensive to replay all those creatures, it kind of sets you back when we want to be emptying our hands from all those extra cards we've drawn from Season and Sailor. Then Wolfkin Bond is cuttable, I think Growth Cycle might just be better. Then we could shave a Scuttle Mod pretty easily as well, I think. So I think this would be our final build. Looking at the mana distribution, I think I still like the Evolving Wilds, even if we're not splashing a third color, just as an enters the battlefield tap land. It's a little bad if we end up scrying a ton of lands to the bottom with Season of Growth and Octoprofit, and then shuffle our deck with Evolving Wilds. So there is a bit of drawback, as opposed to the normal dual lands that enter the battlefield tapped, but just having that early mana fixing on turn 2 can be quite useful. Because we do need the green early for Leafkin Druids, and then most of our spells are blue. We have some double blue as well. 
but we also need like double green in some of the late turns if we want to double spell growth cycle plus rabbit bites. So this seems okay. I think we're good to go. Easy keep, turn to druid, turn three Octoprophet hopefully. We even have the Season plus Rabbit Bite combo. The Blade is pretty good. But next turn Octoprophet lines up pretty well against it. Might want to kill the Diamond Knight before it gets too large here. So next turn we can Octoprophet and then the turn after we can maybe Season plus Rabbit Bite it. And I'm gonna keep lands on top. Alright, so definitely want the forest. Question is, do we want the growth cycle afterwards? It seems okay with the season. And we've got some cheap creatures like Frostlings that we can play alongside it. So yeah, ideally next turn we go season into Rabbit Bites. Killing the Diamond Knights. Could also just slam an Aerial Mantle, that's also reasonable. We'll see. And they've got their own season, so now we've got to watch out for opposing pump spells as well. And then a Glaring Aegis. So it's gonna draw them a card, tap down Profits, and give the Knights a bunch of extra toughness. So now the Rabbit Bite play is not gonna work out as well. Of course we can still Sleep Paralysis the Knight at some point. So I'm probably just gonna play the Aerial Mental for now. Could also Frost Links plus Season. So the problem with playing Aerial Mantle is that we're probably not going to be able to block if our opponent attacks with their creatures. They could also equip the Knight and attack for four. Whereas Frostlings can kind of slow the opponent down a little bit. Although we also know the top card of our library, which is Growth Cycle. So we don't get any value out of the Scry if we Season plus Frostlings this turn. So it's a pretty close decision. I think I just like playing the Aerial Mantle here. Next turn if we play Frostlings and we have four creatures, this also makes double green. So that could enable some plays. Not our Diamond Knights, maybe we get to kill that one with the Rabbit Bites. The upside of playing Season last turn is that it sets up Growth Cycle plus Bite on the following turn pretty nicely. So that was something else to consider. But there is some value to kind of waiting on this Frostlings, maybe we get to tap down something bigger. Alright, Angelic Gifts. So it's gonna draw them two cards, so our point's kinda going off here. Knight attacks for four, we'll take it. Alright, so... I could Growth Cycle plus Rabbit Bite, but that would be without a Season in play, so we wouldn't get to draw cards from it. So I think for now I like Lynx plus Season, and then we can even attack with the Air Elemental if we want to, and then next turn we can set up our Cycle plus Rabbit Bite play. And now we also get value out of the Scry, and we're not going to be able to use the extra mana from Leaf Kindred, so we're fine playing the Season first and then the Lynx. Well, that seems like a good draw. And then, do we feel comfortable attacking with the Aerial Mantle? I think so. And then we're fine double blocking on their ground creatures here. Even if they might have a pump spell, we'll see. Could also go Paralysis the Big Knight and then Rabbit Bite the small one. Fencing Ace. It's also a scary one in a deck full of pump spells. So your opponent's got a nice synergistic uh, Season of Growth deck. Inquisitor, that's not too scary. But it does pump the Diamond Knights. 
So they're basically mono white splashing green for season, so that makes their diamond knights pretty effective as well. Move the blade. So yeah, now the rabbit bite is not enough to kill the diamond knight by itself. I could of course growth cycle the elemental and then rabbit bite to kill the diamond knight. That uh, works as well, but we have to do it during our turn as rabbit bites a sorcery. I think this turn we're probably better off going for the growth cycle plus rabbit bite play. And then next turn we can paralysis one of the knights. And if we draw land we also get to play the risen reef. So I could play the risen reef first. But then if we don't hit a land then we can't make this play. So I think I'd do this first. Another season. I guess we'll play that one. So we'll have to take a hit from this Diamond Knight next turn. But now we also have another growth cycle lined up. I think attacking is probably worth it. And we should have the late game covered with double season Spectral Sailor Risen Reef, so it's all about just surviving the next few turns. Another blade. Alright. That's gonna hurt. Our growth cycle does now deal five additional damage, so it would be that to our air elemental as well. Since we can tap down the knight with the sleep paralysis, even though it has vigilance, and we have just enough mana to play both, although we probably have to chum block here, which means we'll have to draw land in order to be able to play paralysis plus growth cycle. So yeah, this is double strike. So... We're taking seven, um, can just block here, jump here, seems fine. We need to draw lands, because right now we can cycle plus paralysis. Eh, that'll do it, so now we can do both. We would have had the late game covered as well, but if we can win, might as well go for it. Alright, got a reasonable looking hand. Sure, we'll keep. Sometimes it could be worth it to save the sailor and not play it out turn one if we are afraid it's gonna get killed. I think I'm still gonna run it out here since it could get in quite a few points of damage in the meantime. Bird Grabber. I might actually... Hmm, not sure here. Like, it could be worth it to just make this trade, but we've got Octoprofit incoming to block this anyway, and this is pretty valuable going late. I could play Season, or I could just get this stamp land out of the way, but with three lands still in my hands and no three drop to play next turn, I think I'll just play Season right now, in case we pick up a Pump Spell next turn. If we had a bunch of pump spells in hand, I might just play differently, since then we can count on season drawing us cards. Right now we don't know that for sure, so we'd rather hang on to the sailor. So, ooh, Spitfire. That's potentially a scary card. Rabbit Bite is pretty good. We could Rabbit Bite killing the Bird Grabber. I think I would rather hang on to this to deal with the Spitfire. Although the Grabber is also going to fly over for two potentially. So I might leave back the Sailor now to block the Bird Grabber. And then turn 4 we can Octoprofit, turn 5 either Boreal or Rabbit Bite to kill Spitfire. 
if they Chandra's Outrageous here, then we're going to take a ton of damage, since this is going to deal 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we were down to 10. So we could just be dead very quickly. So it's a pretty interesting decision here whether or not we should rabbit bite the Bird Grabber, because theoretically the Boreal Elemental blocks its Spitfire in two turns. Actually, don't hate rabbit biting the Grabber. So I'll shuffle first to get a land out of the deck before drawing. And don't think it matters if we get a forest or an island at this point, since we have two of each. And I'll just kill the grabber. Draw a card. Ah, Cloud can see her. is useful too. Smuggler. So now the Spitfire could become unblockable, so the plan of blocking with Boreal Elemental is no longer going to work out. So maybe regretting the Rabbit Bind a little bit. Although Lynx is useful. Octa Prophet blocks the Smuggler profitably, but I'm happy trading the Lynx for it. So just Lynx tapping down Spitfire seems pretty straightforward. Alternatively, I can just play the Octa Prophet anyway. I think I like Lynx. They also didn't play fourth land yet, so they could be holding a Chandra's Outrage. In which case we want to tap down Spitfire the turn they play it. Yeah, we get to scry one anyway with the season, so the scry from Octoprophet is maybe less important than it would normally be. Alright, so we're just digging for rabbit bites. Growth cycles, more cards that synergize with the season. Land 4. So we are in Chandra's Outrage territory here. But now at least the Spitfire is not going to deal 4 damage. It's going to be an Amber Cat instead. And that's it. Alright, so yeah, playing Boreal Elemental seems pretty safe. And then I can get an attack in with the Sailor as well. So we've got some nice late game card draw engines here with the Sailor, the Season of Growth. So we're just worried about stabilizing the early game. Once we do, we should be in fine shape to take over the late game. And Tracker, I don't think we need Tracker. We already have plenty of mana sinks here. So Sleep Paralysis, Rabbit Bite are the two removal spells we have left. And otherwise another Air Elemental, another Boreal Elemental, more Flying Blockers basically would be useful too. Alright. So, six mana. We can only do one thing this turn unless we draw into something with a Cloudkin Seer, so I do like playing the Cloudkin. So we gotta make sure to scry before we draw. Alright, that'll do. I think I'm staying back with the growth cycle. Like, I could attack, there's a small chance they block, they probably don't. Although I guess they can just use Smuggler on Spitfire and then not attack with the Boreal Elemental. And if they don't block, we still have the Cloudkin Seer plus Growth Cycle to block the Boreal. So I guess attacking is reasonable. I could also send the Frost Links, although we might want it back to block the Amber Cat or the Smuggler. Yeah, I guess this is fine. This is pretty transparent that we're representing Growth Cycle. But again, we've got the Cloudkin Seer back plus Growth Cycle to block. Could have also only sent the Boreal Elemental, which makes it probably more likely that the opponent blocks, because then they wouldn't be respecting Growth Cycle as much. Ah, well, this is pretty good for us. Still gotta be careful that the Spitfire doesn't kill us out of nowhere. But all we can do is dig for a Rabbit Bite or Sleep Paralysis. Just a Spitfire. No blocks. Right, just take one. And a Diamond Knight. 
All right, it's not so bad. And another growth cycle, that's a great pickup. Plus five, plus five now, so it can also deal quite a bit of damage. So let's cry first with the Octo Profits. And do we want to scry one first or scry two first? I think I'll scry one first. Bottom of the lands. Alright, Risen Reef seems like a fine addition. And now, which creatures attack? Don't want to be dead to the Spitfire, but even if they pump it twice, we should be relatively safe, and they can smuggle it anyway, so it's not like we can reliably block it. So I think I'll send all the flyers. I could cycle right now, let's see, 5, 6, plus 5 is 11. Would put our opponent dead next turn. Don't know if that's necessary to go for it. I think I just attack for 6, and then we still have lethal next turn if they don't have any flyers or removal. But we keep this defensively as well. Just in case. And not giving the opponent the information that they could be dead is also valuable. If they have a Chandra's Outrage, they still can't kill the Boreal Elemental. So don't hit our spots, but anything could happen. If our opponent's got like a couple of shocks in hand, we could be dead. Alright. No attacks. That works for me. So I don't want to be the first one to have to use a pump spell, so I think I'm just attacking with the Boreal Elemental. Because if I attack with Cloudkin or Spectral Sailor or opponent blocks with Spitfire, I go for the pump spell and our opponent shocks in response, then we're going to be sad. Now the Boreal Elemental is a safer target for the growth cycle. So let's say I attack with the Boreal Elemental or opponent Chandra's Outrage as a Cloudkin Seer to grow the Spitfire, then the cycle will still save the Boreal Elemental. Any reason to play a creature first? We would get to scry and set up our draw from the cycle, but if I draw into another cycle, then I might want the mana. Let's just attack first and see what happens. Just this one, and let's see if they have the Outrage for one of our other creatures, or if they just take it, put and takes it. That's fine, no need to grow a cycle right now then. Even though there's a small chance we could kill the opponent if we top deck into the third growth cycle. And then... We've got seven mana available. I think I just like Octo Profits and then keep up Growth Cycle. Could also Risen Reef keep up both Growth Cycle and the Spectral Sailor's ability, but this just puts more power and toughness in play. And I think I do want to keep up Growth Cycle if possible. Well, that seems pretty good. Well, all the flyers. I don't think I want to turn any down. Yeah, let's just say go. A reef would be nice and all, but I think I'd rather hang on to this growth cycle. Yeah, next turn we can probably attack with everyone, unless the board changes drastically. No attacks. Well, that's good. What card are we afraid of if we attack and they don't block? I guess like Unsummon could get us. I think attacking with everyone's reasonable. Could make a case not to attack with the Spectral Sailor, but then the Elemental goes unblocked. Yeah, let's send everyone. And our opponent kind of has to make the first move here. Since the way it sits, I could just let damage happen and we would be pretty happy. But I expect to see some sort of instant speed removal here. So, Unsummon, Chandra's Outrage, Shock. Those are cards that should be on our mind. So they're double blocking like that. I think I would rather kill the Smuggler than the Diamond Knight. I'm gonna pass priority. So right now our opponent's taking six. And there's the Chandra's Outrage on the Sailor. Opponent's got one blue mana up, so we could go for lethal if they have unsummon, then that's not great for us. I guess we can growth cycle the sailor to just save it, and then if they unsummon, like they might just unsummon the sailor to prevent the most damage and we can easily replay it. So 
So let's see if they also have the unsummon, or if they're just dead. And these would still trade. So their opponent did indeed have the Chandra's Outrage in hand, they just didn't have a great opportunity to play it. Sweet. Alright, so far so good. Alright, so we're on the draw. I think I like this hand. We just need a third land and then we're in pretty good shape since we get to scry with the Season of Growth if we play the Lynx. And then a fourth land for Octoprofit should give us all the draws we need. And we already have a growth cycle to go with the season. And we even get a one drop. Red whites. Bird grabber again. I think I'm attacking and playing a season. Even though we can make kind of similar arguments to the previous game. Fencing Ace. Seems like a good target for the Frostlings. And Leafkin Druid. Don't hate it. Can play it alongside Growth Cycle, give us a bit more mana. I'm not sure if I'm gonna play it next turn is a question. Like, are we just gonna play Octoprofit or are we gonna go Leafkin keep up Growth Cycle? But it seems good enough since we're pretty likely to get to four creatures, at which point this makes two mana and provides additional mana to sink into the Sailor's ability. And I'm pretty happy to trade here. Although again, I guess there's a Leafkin argument that we want to keep as many creatures in play as possible. If they spend their turn playing a pump spell, I'm happy. Yeah, sure. Like, our, our hand's pretty good going into the late game between the Sailor and the Season. So, I'm happy trading cards one for one since we're eventually gonna get ahead on resources. I think we'll still play the Octoprofit this turn though. And then, yeah, land into Boreal Elemental seems fine. Should have probably scryed one before scry two again. But in this case, I'm happy with both. It's kind of an interesting question whether we should, like, scry one or scry two first. Because if we find something nice with a scry one, then our scry two becomes less valuable. But I guess we're more likely to find something nice with a scry two, and a scry one then becomes completely useless. So I think generally Scry 1 before Scry 2 makes more sense. This is double strike, so no good blocks. But now we can try to set up our growth cycle defensively. Although it's kind of going to be a blowout if our opponent has any additional tricks. Yeah, Fencing Ace is a scary card. It's possible I shouldn't have kept the Boreal Elemental on top, since if our opponent played some aura, we wanted to dig for one of our few removal spells. I think I'm actually going to bottom this one, since I want to keep up Growth Cycle this turn. I could also take another 6 and then try and play more blockers, so that the cycle is going to be more effective. But they could also play another enchantment. I guess then our block also doesn't line up well. So we're kind of in a tough spot either way, if they have more auras to put on this uh, Fencing Ace. I guess it's reasonable to take another hit and then set up with another Boreal Elemental before deciding to try and block this Fencing Ace. It's a close decision. I think I'll play the Boreal Elemental, and I'm probably bottoming this additional Boreal Elemental and dig for one of our few removal spells. And then I could keep the Octoprofit back and double block. I think we'd rather attack and then set up a double block next turn with Growth Cycle backup. But we potentially put ourselves in an awkward spot if our opponent has a bunch more pump spells for this fencing ace, since then we might have to even chump block it, which is not what we want. For example, if our point attacks and has infuriate, we would be taking 12. 
but it's kind of difficult to play around it since if we double block and infuriate we also lose our entire board right, another maniacal rage so it hits for 10 now if they have a shock we're dead i think i still take it though and then hope to double block next turn so i get to play a leafkin druids and at least our growth cycle is a little bit disguised because this seems fine just as a chum blocker we also get to keep up for mana for Spectral Sailor, so they don't necessarily suspect we have a Growth Cycle in hand. I guess we'll attack here. I mean, they were also just pretty close to dying on the way back, but I think we gotta try and block. Yeah, let's hope they don't have any shenanigans. Puts the Boreal Elemental first. Inspire Charge, so it's going to be 7 power, which is enough to kill the Boreal Elemental in first strike. But if we Growth Cycle the Octoprophets, then the Fencing Ace should still die, because it'll deal 7 first strike on, on the Boreal, not enough to kill Octoprophet. And then in regular damage we have 6 power on Octoprophet, which is just enough to kill the Fencing Ace. Alright, so now the board is clear and we should be able to take over pretty easily here. Let's play the Cloudkin first. Scribe before drawing. Don't necessarily need land. Alright. Rabbit Bind seems excellent. Alright, so we'll keep both. I guess if they play a threat, then Rabbit Bind draws us into the Air Elemental. If they don't play a threat, then we want to apply the pressure with Air Elemental. I guess we can Sailor draw into Air Elemental and still play it. So yeah, this seems fine. Rabbit Bind first. Attack for one. Alright. Got to dodge a burn spell. Squad Captain, not too impressive. So let's Rabbit Bites. If we can dodge a Shock or a Chandra's Outrage, we're looking good. That seems pretty good too. Any reason to keep back an additional blocker? Can't think of any. Oh. Well, that's sad. Shock of the top. Oh, I guess, yeah, they could have had the Scorcher making three one ones. So there was a reason to keep back an additional blocker since we were at exactly two. So if they played the Scorcher, then we would have gotten punished for attacking, so probably should have kept back at least two blockers. Act of Treason as well, I guess. Oh well. Hand seems quite good. We're having Sailor in each opening hand, we haven't activated it yet, but... At some point, hopefully, we will. So I guess this also kind of illustrates my point that we probably don't need the portal since we've been able to use our mana pretty effectively in each game. Alright, points also on season red-green, so can expect to see lots of pump spells. That was a nice draw. So playing against season of growth, the best we can do is just apply pressure so that we don't have to block into a Season of Growth so that pump spells are less effective so racing is usually a good idea for now we'll just play the Cloudkin Seer
And next turn we might drop the Boreal Elemental. Points in red green, so this Woodland Champion could pick up some counters from the 5 mana Dragon. They've got Ferocious Pop to combo with it too. So we'll take 3 for now. Rabbit Bites, pretty good too. Although this time we're missing the Season of Growth to combo with it. We've got a nice little Air Force, points blue as well. So this is where we gotta watch out for those uh, pump spells, although Mask of Immolation is quite effective against our board, can take out the Cloud Seer and the Spectral Sailor. Ferocious Pup as additional sacrifice fodder. So that was a pretty good card for the opponent to have. So they do have the mana to move the equipment right now, so they could do its main phase here, kill Cloudkin, kill Sailor. And we suddenly lose our card draw engine. So if the game goes late and we don't draw a Season of Growth, while our opponent's drawing additional cards from their Season of Growth, we could fall behind. Take four. And of course the Mask also making a token for the Woodland Champion, now up to a 4-4. So two mana for a 4-4, that's a pretty good deal. So our opponent's got a pretty synergistic Woodland Champion deck, although Frost Lynx is a pretty nice one to have access to. Might still be better to Paralysis, although the upside of Frost Lynx of course is that it puts a 2-2 in play that can maybe block the wolf or attack the opponent back. Don't think we're using Rabbit Bite, although we could even consider going Frost Lynx, Rabbit Bite, your wolf, so they can't deploy any pump spells next turn, since we'll still have the Sleep Paralysis as removal. And it's not like we have a giant creature to Rabbit Bite with, we only have a 3-4, so if they play something big, the Rabbit Bite's not really going to be good enough. Our best chance is to kind of get them with this Boreal Elemental before they manage to deal with it. Maybe the Frostlings can get in and attack as well. Ouch. Not much we could have done to prevent that from happening. Ooh, hello. Well, I think I would like to have a 4-4 instead of a Season of Growth. Could also steal their land. I think we'd rather have the 4-4 though. Alright, so now we're pretty far behind on board, we still have a removal spell in hand. Alright, and summons, not a bad one against an agent. Although it's only gonna come down as a 2-2. So yeah, we're definitely not out of the woods yet. So hoping to draw more flyers, air elemental, we've got a second boreal elemental. Risen Reef would be pretty good now, although it does die to the mask. Opponents crying, bottoms. Well, that's a good draw. I think we're fine trading Frost Lynx for the wolf. Opponent chumps as well. Alright, so they're kind of giving up on a bit of mask value. And this Boreal Elemental is going to be tough to deal with, with just 4 mana available, since now Rabbit Bite no longer works. Alright, they've got the Risen Reef. Well, Sleep Paralysis is not exactly the answer we need against the Risen Reef. But they might just jump with it anyway. Opponent struggling to find lands. So... I could go Tracker into Sleep Paralysis, hit them for 5 down to 6. I don't think that's the best course of action since I want to keep Paralysis in case they have their own big flyer, like a Boreal Elemental or Air Elemental. So we'll start by attacking. Alright, Chumping Risen Reef. I don't see that every day. Oh, 
Land 5 comes into play tapped. We're hitting them for 7 next turn. Scorcher's not bad though. It gives them multiple chum blockers on the ground. But still, the Boreal Elemental here is the thing that really counts. And we can just like start activating the tracker if we want to play a grindier game instead. We'll see next turn here what the best course of action is. They do get to scry three times, so they get to dig pretty deep. And again, more tokens, so their Woodland Champion would have been pretty enormous by now. They played Double Pop, Mask, Scorcher. That's a lot of tokens. Land. I think I'm attacking with everyone instead of activating the Tracker. Because if we attack with just the Agent, they could triple block and that's reasonable for them. I would rather put them in, in kind of a squeeze here. And I don't think it's quite worth it to Paralysis. Kind of the same reasoning as last turn. Yeah, given that they had a Scorcher coming up, jumping with Risen Reef seems kind of suspect. Seems fine. It's our opponent's down to four. They're not dead yet. Even uh, with the sleep paralysis, we know our opponent can stay alive. But at least we have a big flyer covered. And if the board does stall out, then we can start using the tracker. So there's a Boreal Elemental. I've got the perfect answer lined up. And I'll have to jump with the 1-1 one, one token again. It's also a good one. Uh, so let's see if I play this first, then I can still play Paralysis afterwards. Oh, never mind. That actually doesn't work because of... Yeah, this is not an ability, unlike Prison Realm. Oh well, we'll, we'll just do it next turn. Probably was better to just sleep paralysis instead of playing the air elemental, because then our opponent would have been at one life with no board. But they probably still die next turn. If sleep paralysis was like a prison realm, then the ability on the boreal elemental would not have mattered. But sleep paralysis turns out is uh, still going to cost us two more mana. So we're basically in the same spot as last turn. But I guess we'll make this play now. Opponent has to jump. And another reduced to ashes is not going to work. A rabbit bite is not good enough. So I guess they could like mask for one damage and then maybe rabbit bite for three more damage. If they have a lance, right, they're anticipating first. So now the rabbit bite line of play no longer works. Is their opponent finally dead? Looks like it. Alright, GG's. Alright, well, I think this hand is keepable thanks to Scuttlemutt. Without it, it would be a little trickier. But we're on the play, we've got two draw steps to draw any land basically, and then we're in pretty good shape. We've got to keep. Bit heavy on the three drops perhaps. But Frost Links can also buy us more time. Alright, come on land. I'll even take an Evolving Wilds. Island will do. Yeah, we might actually play Risen Reef this game. Denizen, that's fine. So no Convolute to worry about. Take action. We're mono blue so far, but the Scuttle Mod at least helps us out a little bit here. And blue red. Does a Risen Reef get to live for a turn? Since we've got more elementals coming up. Another Denizen. Alright, that's kind of scary. 
were maybe drawing a ton of cards with Risen Reef, but our opponent could just deck us out with these denizens instead. Uh oh, shock. The Scuttlemutt, that's a greedy play, but it could definitely work out for the opponent. As we're out of green mana now. Well, we can go digging with Octoprophets. Makes sense. Alright, Forest, definitely want to keep that. And then Season, I mean, opponent could just mill us with the Denizen, so keeping cards on top doesn't necessarily work. But we'll still keep it just in case they don't. I guess you could make the argument of keeping the Season, since if they mill two, then we're milling a Season and not an unknown card. Yeah, had we played Lynx we could have found a land, but there's no way of knowing. I would rather dig two cards deep instead of one card deep. So let's see if they have a blue creature here. They do. Alright, well. Top card's gonna be random. But now we can Lynx the Cloudkin. But yeah, not really liking our chances here. We've got a pretty slow draw, which doesn't line up against the Denizen. Of course, once our opponent runs out of blue creatures, we'll be fine. But until then... Things are not looking great. So it doesn't matter here. Alright, that works. So here we want to decline, so we can actually draw the forest. And then play the forests. And then I could rabbit bite the denizen. I think we want to do that sooner rather than later. Let's just play defense for now. Next turn, the growth cycle allows a much better attack, potentially. So the opponent might be regretting killing the Scuttle mode instead of the Risen Reef, now that the Risen Reef is gonna draw us a bunch of extra cards. But, you know, if they were on the mill plan, then us drawing extra cards maybe doesn't hurt them as badly. Fine trading, I think. So now put it on the flyer plan instead. That we'll have to worry about, although double growth cycle could do some damage as well. Button takes it. We'll play a tracker. And then we've got 17 cards remaining. First one's plus three, the second one's plus five. So it's potentially 8 damage out of nowhere. More flyers, alright. Well, so our opponent now has 8 power in the air, so they've got a 2 turn clock, and we have to try and beat that with our ground creatures. It's not going to be easy, although Sailor definitely helps. Can ambush the Cloudkins here and draw an extra card, maybe. Let's attack. So that's kind of the expected block. So I can do this and then still Sailor plus draw a card. That seems pretty good. I could also ambush the Boreal Elemental. I think I'm fine just doing this, killing the Denizen. And then just getting one card out of the Spectral Sailor. Ambushing the Cloudkins here. Seems a bit better to me since it doesn't run into any interaction on the opponent's side. And 6 and 6 is not a 2-turn clock, so if we can successfully kill the Cloudkins here and they don't have any burn spells or other flyers, we could uh, survive. I think this is a reasonable Drawing a card, saving the growth cycle. Yeah, I mean, I could block the Boreal Elemental, but then we don't get to draw a card. We're using our mana pretty inefficiently, and technically doesn't change the clock. It's a close call. Smuggler. Doesn't do it by itself. Cloudkin's a good draw, too. Alright, so now what? Can attack with both. Probably just play Cloudkin first, actually. See what we hit with the Risen Reef. Alright, 
I don't think it matters which order we do it here. Draw the agents. And a sleep paralysis, so those are both quite good. I could sleep paralysis the aeronauts. Probably start by attacking. Can always jump with the Risen Reef if we have to. So if we go for the pump spell, it's only 10 damage. So I could block with Cloudkin and Growth Cycle, or I could Sleep Paralysis. Sleep Paralysis seems safer to me. And we can target the Boreal Elemental here. Even though the Cloudkin has a good block on the Aeronauts. Reduce. Alright. Attack with both. Uh, I'll play around Shock, I guess. And this Growth Cycle's lethal. And even another one, just in case. Alright, sweet. That was a close one. Alright, so we're 4 and 1. Let's keep it up. Alright, so this hand is missing blue, but we have Leafkin for ramp and season to kind of dig for a blue source, and we're on the draw. I think this is a keep. Could make the case for playing season before Leafkin, depending on our next couple draw steps, just to get that scry one to dig towards an island. Ooh, hello. So if we're playing a slower matchup and they don't remove the Risen Reef, this is going to be an easy game. Turn to Sprites. So now if we play Leafkin, we guarantee the Scuttle Mud next turn, basically. Even though we miss out on a bit of Risen Reef value potentially, I think that's still fine. The alternative is playing Season of Growth into Leafkin, which can also scry towards an island. Eh, that works. So I'll still happily play Risen Reef first here. And then next turn with the land we get to Boreal, otherwise Frostlings could still be fine. Bone keeps up four mana. Not sure what to make of that. Could be Convolute, Bone to Ash, Chandra's Outrage. Well, they probably would have outraged the Risen Reef if they had the chance. So Counterspell seems like the most likely answer here, which means we probably want a double spell to play around a Counterspell so we don't waste our entire turn, since they also didn't pump the Sprite, so they wanted to keep a blue mana. So going Season of Growth into Scuttlemut seems nice here. So... Let's do that. They have a pause, but that's also the sprite holding priority. So they could just be holding a bone to ash. Since they might have wanted to convolute the season. So let's play the scuttle mutts. And we'll probably see a bone to ash. Is my guess. Alright. After thinking about it, our opponent decides to let us have the scuttle mutts. That's fine by me. Uh, do we want to land? Yeah, I guess I'll keep lands. And then I could attack for one. If it gets ambushed by the cutthroats, we're going to be sad. So I don't, I don't think I need to attack. All right, they did have the outrage. They just decided to let us keep Risen Reef. I guess they could have responded to an elemental by killing the Risen Reef. Brawler. Alright, so... Now I could just Boreal Elemental. And that's it. It's probably fine. 
I could have also, like, bluff attacked with the Scuttlemutt. Now we want a bottom lens, I think. Because we have a Season of Growth in play, they probably don't block with a Brawler, but... Don't think we need to take that risk. They could still have a Bone to Ash for all we know, but... It doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense in their deck, from the looks of it. And I think we should double block. It's not a great trade, trading a Brawler for an Elemental. But this is just gonna hit a bit too hard, I think. I've got a backup anyway, we've got Tracker and Season for the late game. So we just want to survive. Hopefully we'll pick up a pump spell at some point to go alongside the Boreal Elemental. Rabbit Bites, not quite good enough, but could be useful later if we pick up a pump spell as well. So here we could just play another Boreal Elemental, we could go Frostling, step down your Brawler, and then we can still play a Tracker. That seems nice. Just buy ourselves a bit of time. And then next turn the Leafkin Druid also makes double green. I don't think we need forests, so yeah. Growth Cycle is a card we're looking for the most, I think. I guess the Agent would also be pretty good at 7 mana. Could cast it next turn. Spectral Sailor would be decent, although we can just activate the Tracker as well to find more action. Sprite is gonna venture an attack. For two. And no other plays from the opponent. Alright, so we could go second season into Boreal Elemental. That seems reasonable. Let's see if they have the convolutes. No convolutes. Not gonna say no to an air elemental. Also, four power means it's big enough to fight with the rabbit bite to kill the brawler. So I'm probably just gonna take the hit for now, and then I think I'm attacking. I could keep some of these creatures back, try and triple block the brawler, for example. But when we have a rabbit bite plus air elemental coming up, I don't think that's necessary. And if they have a cutthroat to ambush, that's fine by me. So we'll do this. Ooh. Flame sweep. That was almost very good. Could have been a lot worse. And this hits for four. So we can still go Air Elemental into Rabbit Bite. Now, we cannot Rabbit Bite the Boreal Elemental, but I think I would rather kill the Brawler anyway. And draw two cards of Season of Growth. Uh, that seems pretty good. Alright, so we're definitely winning the late game, so just again... Gotta make sure we survive, so we'll play pretty conservatively. Look for those growth cycles, more rabbit bites, sleep paralysis. A weaponsmith. Could grab a bow or a vial next turn. Alright, so... How much mana are we working with? Six, seven, eight. So I could play Sailor Draw and then still draw into a two mana spell. I think that's worth it in case we draw a growth cycle and we get to scry twice as well to set that up. So I'll sailor first and see what's on top. We've got uh, three growth cycles in the deck that we haven't seen yet. Ooh, there's a bone to ash, so they did have it after all. Fair enough. Alright, change of plan. Let's see. Could also just activate the tracker, but I think we're looking for non-creature spells more than creature spells at this point. 
So we'll scry one first and then scry two, I think. Well, Agent of Treachery is a good one, and now we're pretty happy our opponent cast her Bone to Ash already. And then scry two. Probably a bottoming the Octoprophets. Again, looking for those growth cycles instead. Didn't think we need to attack. Play it safe. Opponent gets a Vial of Dragonfire. Octoprophet, so we're just gonna steal this Boreal Elemental. And then we can start pressuring them with our own Flyers. Where are those growth cycles at? Not gonna say no to a Cloudkin Seer. And we have a Flyer on defense, so these are fine to attack. Octoprophets, I think, can get in there as well. Still have a tracker to block their Octoprophets. And I'm fine with any trades that happen. So if this Cloudkin Seer draws us into a growth cycle, we could have lethal next turn instead our opponent explodes before we get the chance to find out. Pretty likely to draw into a growth cycle here, we get to scry twice and then draw. And we still had three in the deck. Alright, so we're five and one. Not bad, not bad. Let's see if we can make it all the way to seven here. Alright, on the play, with a hand that could suffer from not having enough creatures to go with all these interactive spells, but gotta keep. We've got Season plus two ways to draw more cards, and a creature, and all the colors we need. Just gotta hope our opponent isn't off to a blazing start. Black Rat, don't see that color combination very often. At least not on Arena. Scuttlemutt, a nice pickup. Just want to scrying to lands here. Boreal Elemental is a nice card, but if Scuttlemutt dies, we want to make sure we can play the Octoprophet. And we've got an Air Elemental already waiting in the wings or in the clouds. Diamond Knights. Does make for a nice target for this Rabbit Bite. Could just wait a turn and develop the Octoprophet first, or just, I guess, run out the Elemental since we drew a land. It seems better to me. And now we can probably bottom most lands we draw. Another Octoprophet. It's not bad, it's not great, it's pretty average draw. Maybe we should be digging towards more Rabbit Bites and Growth Cycles. Eh. Given that we have the Season of Growth, we kind of get the Scry effect already. And a 3 3 4, four. We can probably do better. So that's gonna get Outraged. Diamond Knight a 2-2, two, two. so now... We might want to consider killing the Diamond Knight before it gets out of hand, especially now that we drew another Season. That seems like a pretty straightforward Rabbit Bite and draw two cards. And next turn we get to play the Boreal Elemental, that's going to be a bit trickier for the opponent to remove. So we've got our card draw engines running. So we're pretty well set up to grind through removal. I think we're fine attacking, if they block I might growth cycle. But I'm also fine with the trade. Opponent takes it. And what are we looking for? Probably not a forest. Agent of Treachery would be good. Um, I guess we bottomed the other Boreal Elemental. 
more growth cycles would be good. Risen Reef. Got to be careful of uh, Blade Brand here, for example. Could punish us for blocking. Next turn, we have enough mana for Octoprophet and the growth cycle. And if they don't have a land, they don't have the mana to murder the Boreal Elemental, so there's not a lot of ways their opponent can kill it. I guess Bone Splinters could work if they sacrifice the Aeronaut, but that's a pretty good exchange for us. Ooh, Buccaneer, alright. It's a nice one. And attacks, so... Yeah, Blade Brand is the card that stands out the most that the opponent could have. If we block the Aeronaut and a Blade Brand, then they get to draw a card, and we trade Aeronaut for Boreal Elemental. They could also just want to discard to the Buccaneer, but then this attack with Aeronaut doesn't make a ton of sense. Anything else they could have in terms of pump spells? I guess they could have plus 3 plus 2 Infuriate, which would also punish us for blocking, especially when we have a Growth Cycle in hand. So I think I take it, and then next turn I can Octoprophet plus Growth Cycle, and maybe play around set pump spell. They could also be bluffing, but... I don't think it's worth it in the spots since our Boreal Elemental is pretty valuable. Frostlinx is pretty excellent here. Nice little tempo play. I think tapping down the Aeronaut and then blocking the Buccaneer and going for a Growth Cycle could be an option, although it does get punished by like a Shock or another removal spell at instant speed. Could just play an Octoprophet keep up Growth Cycle since Octoprophet naturally blocks the Buccaneer. But then we're taking damage from the Aeronaut. Not sure how aggressive our opponent's deck is and how much damage we need to prevent from the Aeronaut. I think I like Frost Lynxing. Well, Rabbit Bite is excellent. And then... I don't have to attack with a Boreal Elemental. But I think I want to. And then I can double block the Buccaneer. If they try and do something fancy, we still have the Growth Cycle as a backup. And then next turn the Boreal Elemental can bite the Aeronaut, hopefully. And on the surface, this is not a suspicious double block on our part. Eh, Amber Hauler might mess it up. So if they have Amber Hauler plus another trick, we could get punished. Now a double block would be a little bit suspicious, because it plays right into the Amber Hauler. Although trading for an Amber Hauler, I guess, isn't the worst. So I think I still double block, just want to spend my mana. Force them to use whatever trick they have for the Amber Hauler. And then we can cycle whatever gets killed by the Amber Hauler. Hopefully they don't have another Shock or Disfigure in hand. Risen Reef, it's nice too. So, Cycle resolves, a Lynx takes two. And was it a Blade Brand after all? It was. Alright, so we get to trade all our creatures here. But that's okay. I think we do want to kill this Aeronaut if possible. Only have single green, so we don't get to Risen Reef plus Rabbit Bites. Um, I guess we also don't get to Octoprophet plus Rabbit Bites, since we only have 5 mana now. I mean, we could get lucky with the Risen Reef, I guess. Between the Scry and the Risen Reef's effect, we're pretty likely to find a forest. So I think it's worth it. And then we'll see whether or not we attack based on whether or not we hit. So we want to Scry first. Keep a forest on top. Island's not quite good enough here. Alright, that'll do. And now we want to draw the forest instead of putting it in play, so we want to decline. Play the forests. Rabbit bites. And draw two. So we're going off. Could keep the elemental back if we suspect the haste creature, but I think I'm attacking. Want to get the game over with as well. Mask can kill the Risen Reef. That's fine, we got our value. We've got double season of growth in place, so I'm not too upset. And a brawler. Alright. So far, so good. 
So here we can Octoprofit plus Cloudkin. Any reason to play one before the other. If we draw into some other 4 mana play we would want to make instead, like a Sleep Paralysis for example, we might want a Cloudkin Seer first, although the Octoprofit gives us more Scry to set up the draw for the Cloudkin for next turn. Um, what cards are we looking for at this point? We've got our Agent left, a bunch of Growth Cycles, a Sleep Paralysis. And do we have another Rabbit Bites? We've played both already. So most cards that we're looking to draw are pretty expensive, so playing the Seer first doesn't necessarily keep up enough mana to play whatever we want to draw into, like the Agent. So I think I'll Octoprofit first. And then we'll do the Scry once before the Scry 2. Well, uh, there was a reason to Cloudkin first. We'll keep that on top, having more removal seems nice. And don't need the forest. And then we'll Cloudkin. And then we'll draw first and then Scry since we're fine drawing the Paralysis. And then look for the Agent. And there we go. And I think I'm okay attacking for 3. Given a chance we could even consider chum blocking the Brawler, or of course we could double block. Depends what they do first. Alright, Smuggler, so the Brawler could get in a big hit, so that's kind of scary. So hopefully we don't get burnt out. Bird Grabber. That's fine. So what are we stealing with the Agent? The Mask is scary, the Smuggler is scary, the Brawler is scary. And do we have Lethal? Let's see, 5, 6... So there's no way we can set up Lethal this turn. If we steal the Brawler, they just sack in a response, fair point, so... Stealing the Brawler doesn't make a ton of sense, I guess. So yeah, given that they're sacrificing it in response, if we steal the Brawler, I think stealing Smuggler makes more sense. Get rid of their evasive uh, making creature. We have to target something with the Agent as the ability goes on the stack. So even though the ability from Agent might resolve last, we still need to select the targets when the ability goes on the stack. So we don't get to gain more information by scrying first, I mean. And we'll leave one flyer back in case this gains flying somehow. Get in for six. Although I guess this could also die to the mask. So how safe do we want to play here basically? If they make like three elemental tokens this becomes enormous and it could ping us with a mask. So that's another reason to keep back some blockers. If we hit them for three next turn with a cycle we should have lethal in the air anyway. Did we cast a growth cycle already? We did, so that's plus 5, plus 5. I think I just attack with Octoprofit here. Play it extra safe. And keep two flyers back for the grabber. Not sure what can go wrong. Could have attacked with the Cloudkin since that's more likely to die. But we've got the ground covered with the uh, Agent of Treachery as well, which we're happy to chum block with as well, so... Amber Cat, so that pumps the Brawler. Represents one more damage with the Mask but overall doesn't really mess us up. So, should have lethal next turn with Boreal Elemental. Can just jump with the Cloudkin Seer, could double block forcing action on the Bird Grabber. Doesn't really matter. So this forces him to Sag Grabber killing Cloudkin, killing Agent, but then Boreal's lethal on the way back. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. Let's go. Alright, so this hand is not particularly inspiring. 
turn three scuttlemutt into turn four an octoprophet is not what dreams are made of but it seems solid enough and then the octoprophet hopefully can uh, either scry us into a season or a risen reef or one of our other powerful cards and leaf kindred to speed things up doesn't hurt Ooh. The turn 3 Risen Reef in Teamer Colors. That's scary. Don't have the mana to kill it with the Rabbit Bites. So I guess we'll just play the Octoprophet for now. Forest Forest can go to the bottom. Alright, opponent had a nice start with the Risen Reef. They probably have another elemental here. Could be a brawler, could be a crasher. It's gonna be a brawler. So they're already up two cards. And we're still forced to kill the Risen Reef, otherwise it's gonna completely take over the game. I can attack with Octoprophet, Point probably takes it. And then I just Rabbit Bite, second main, plus Scuttlemutt. Would love to keep this for after like a season of growth, but just have to kill this Risen Reef. Simple as that. Would be happy for opponent blocked, since then we can kill both creatures. Alright, time to draw Agent or own Risen Reef Season. Or one of our three five mana flyers. Right, Healer of the Glade would have been okay with Risen Reef in play. Still pumps a brawler, but not too exciting. So five power and trample. Yeah, that's that's gonna hurt. Did not find what we were looking for, so yeah, our hand doesn't do much. Just hang back and hope to trade off this cycle for the Brawler. Brawler attacks. Think I block with both. And hope that this cycle's enough. Could also just let damage happen. Since if I respond with Growth Cycle and they have a Chandra's Outrage, then we kind of get destroyed. But like it's a close call. So we're not forced to make this play of growth cycle. I guess I'll let damage happen. It feels bad. But it's a safer play. Yeah, also if we draw season we get rewarded for waiting. That's decent. Alright. Wow. Alright, opponent going deep. So, I could take 4 and then use Growth Cycle so we can get rid of this Dragon Mage. I think taking 4 also has the upside of both um, Season of Growth and I guess Rabbit Bite as well. If we draw the second Rabbit Bite, then we might want to Growth Cycle and kill the Mage. Taking four seems okay still. Even though it's pretty mana efficient to cycle. Alright, there's a season. So even though drawing seven could benefit us, I think we should still kill the 5-5 five, five flyer and give it a chance. And hope we don't die. Attacks with all. So I could chump the Crasher if we want to absorb some Trample damage. Or I could block the Healer if we want to keep the Leafkin Druid in play. We prevent two more damage by blocking the Crasher. So right now we're taking... 5. 
if they have Chandra's Outrage, for example, in response to the growth cycle, I guess we're dead anyway. I think this is okay. Since if we're going to draw some cards from the growth cycle, we might need the extra mana from the Leafkin. Outrage the Leafkin. So now this deals 4 plus another 2 is 6, 10, so we're down to 1. And I guess we also take one trample from the healer, so this would kill us. So we need to growth cycle into another growth cycle, or we need to let this happen and then growth cycle the Leafkin. Don't think that's a winning play though. Alright, let's hope to get lucky. Uh, just an evolving wild, so I think we're exactly dead now. They have something else too. Alright. Yeah. Turn 3 Risen Reef. And we didn't have the appropriate response, sadly. Alright, so, well, we get a second chance at the uh, seven wins here. Gotta get our value out of this draft. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a pretty slow hand, but it's a powerful hand with two of our three removal spells and an agent, which I guess you can also count as removal. So this hand could definitely benefit from an, a Leafkin Druid ramping us up, a Scuttlemot. Being on a play makes up for having a pretty slow hand. I think we'll keep and then Octoprophet's going to be looking for lands, it's going to be looking for ramp creatures. Blue-black, alright. So more controlling deck, most likely. So this is probably a matchup for finding Sailor is going to be valuable. Finding Season of Growth is going to be valuable. I'll keep the 3-4 Flyer. Maybe should keep the Evolving Wilds as well. But I figure we'll eventually draw into 7 mana for the Agent. Against Blue-Black we're not going to be in too much of a hurry. So do we want to reduce the board by offering the trade? I don't think so, we have pump spells that could make the trades go in our favor. And I'll play the Boreal first, as it's a bit more resilient against removal and also blocks both creatures well. Alright, Thief shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I could attack with the Boreal Elemental. Seems okay. Like, even if they, worst case, kill the air elemental, we're only taking, like, two additional damage that we wouldn't be taking otherwise. And one more land gives us agents, which is going to be excellent. And then we're looking for Sailor. Looks like they might have their own Sailor here. Or Unsummon. Alright, fair enough. So now they also have removal for Octoprophet, we could be a bit behind. But then I guess they won't have removal for one of our Flyers instead. Just attacks there. I think I'm okay with the trade, given how our hand developed. Just want to stay at a high life total. Opponent's keeping up mana, so could be a Bone to Ash, it's trying to counter this air elemental on the way down. So how about we switch plans here? So I could Rabbit Bite the Warden, or I could do nothing. Could also Sleep Paralysis, got some options. I'm not too upset if one of these removal spells gets dealt with. Playing Paralysis first is not great if they have uh, Bone Splinters that they can then easily sacrifice a creature for. Rabbit Bind would draw us a card, but it's bad if they have Insta-Speed Interaction for this Boreal Elemental, 
it would have to be another unsummon, basically. I think Bite is fine. Might actually want to kill the Thief, since that's the card that can get out of hand the most, and this is just a 2-2 flyer at the end of the day. And we might want to steal the flyer instead of killing it. Yeah, hopefully no one summons. Right, negate, that's fine. Did not expect negate necessarily. Ooh, Sailor, that's a nice one too. We'll hang back with the Elemental. And now we've got multiple good cards to potentially play. It made more sense for them to have a Bone to Ash or a Convolute there than a Negate, but maybe they had both and they just negated. Let's see if they Bone to Ash the Sailor, and we get to Resolve our Elemental or Agent. Right, there's a Bone to Ash. Fair enough. Alright. I think we still probably want to hang back with the Boreal Elemental in case of Swamp into Murder. Ooh. Six mana for five flyer, lets them loot. And they could potentially win the game if this hits us. Could even steal the Atamsis next turn potentially. Sadly didn't draw the land here. First cycle, three damage, second cycle, five, so that's eight plus 7, 15, so not quite lethal. So they're unlikely to kill us with Atomsis next turn, given that they only have four cards in hand. I guess I like attacking with the Air Elemental. Keep the Boreal back, which is more likely to survive. Opponent takes it. Should I growth cycle here? Like, stealing the Atomsis with Agent would be nice, so I don't really want to kill it with the Paralysis. So that's making this turn a little awkward. But maybe I should just paralysis it anyway. Because they might have counter spells up for Agent next turn, and then they get to start looting with Atemsis. So I think I'll just deal the damage, play paralysis, and then keep up growth. Alright, hopefully no bone splinters. Portal, at least if they bounce the Atamsis, we get our sleep paralysis back as well, so it's not too bad. And they don't have any enter the battlefield abilities to go with the portal. So our opponent's got three mana up. They already cast a negate, they're unlikely to have a second one. And convolute, can we play around it? Can play around convolute on the first growth cycle, but not the second one. Yeah, we haven't cast any growth cycles yet. Going for the agent now and getting it convoluted would be bad. Or opponent also decided not to use portal when they had the chance to bounce Atemsis to maybe replay it in the future. Although again, we would also get the paralysis back. So it seems likely that they have some interaction they wanted to keep up here. So in that case, we don't want to go for agents. And we could get the second growth cycle countered and I guess that wouldn't be bad. So I think I'm attacking with both and then we'll see what happens. Opponent's taking the damage. Alright, let's pump up the Boreal Elemental. Let's see what their response is. Draw land. So I could go for it. What punishes us if we target Elemental again? Boreal Elemental, that is. They could have another and summon. They could have Convolute. I think I go for it. Not sure which one I should target though. Because when someone gets us regardless, they can murder us. I guess we'll target the air elemental. And see if they want to counter this. That way if they do have unsummon, we get in more damage than if we went all in on the boreal elemental. Alright, they do have convolutes, fair enough. So opponent's down to three. And now the agents can potentially sneak past the convolutes that they no longer have. And drawing cards with the Thief at 3 life is also pretty sketchy. But I guess they're digging. I 
And bow is not gonna do it. They need something else. Second bow. Alright, so we could age in main phase stealing the warden. In case they have like chum block plus on summon. Yeah, sure, why not? Bottom the lands and get in for seven. Befuddle, all right. So good thing we stole the flyer. All right, sweet. So we got max value out of this draft, going max number of games, but we did get away with seven wins, which is what matters. Yeah, the draft was pretty sweet. Had a pretty nice blue-green deck featuring Risen Reef. And we got a Warlord as our reward. Didn't pick it in the draft, but I guess it's still here. All right, let's crack some packs. Haven't seen this card cast in draft yet, or in constructed for that matter. So it's not an easy card to make work, but yeah, it's pretty exciting when you can pull it off, I guess. Nice mythic wild card. What's the best mythic in the set? Hmm, let me think. There's a lot of good ones, probably like the blue cavalier. Is there any mythic that's better? Maybe some planeswalker. A Jani's pretty decent. Chandra six mana is pretty good. Although there are a lot of elementals, so the minus on Chandra isn't always amazing. I guess Vivian's also quite strong. Although triple green's not the easiest to cast, but yeah, Vivian is a mythic for good reason in the set, so yeah, a lot of powerful mythics. Uh, pack one, pick one, would we take a Warlord or a Shock? It's kind of close. I think right now I would take the Warlord, just to try and make the green-white token deck work, since I haven't been able to play it yet. But I could see Shock just being the safer pick. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.